Name that movie. Shark Bay. Ooh, ha, ha. Hey, welcome back to our stupid directions. I'm Corbin. I'm Nemo. You didn't give them a chance. They should have known it. Instagram, the minute we started. Twitter for more. Not juicy Twitter. Not Twitter. Content. Well, for a few days. Patreon. Yeah, for a few more days. A few for more a few, hours. For a few more days until it shuts down. Yeah. Uh, we got it. <laughs> uh, so follow us there. <laughs> Uh, <coughs> and uh, all the other pleasantries. How you doing? I'm fine. I, I don't you. care. Great. Cool. Today we're doing a movie review of the 2020 film. Oh. <laughs> I'm not even. Hmm. It's easy. I open them because you. You made it. I don't so- know. You made it sound way easier. I than know, I, but but I, that's I did that on purpose. I I I don't know how close I am at all. I open them. I Koshium. Anyaponium kushium. I do think. Anyaponium kushium. Uh, the yeah. Malayalam film. Um, and it's uh, directed and written by uh, Sachi. Yes. Is, I believe, his name. Yes. Uh, and starring uh, Bijou Menon yeah. and. And Prithiraj. Prithiraj. And, and a couple other people. Those are your, your main two leads in this one. Uh, if you haven't watched this one, it's going to be 100 cents for review because it came out in 2020. So if you haven't watched yeah. it, go watch it. Come back. We Amazon. Amazon. We saw it on Amazon. I don't yep. know if it's available. If you have Amazon Prime, it's free. Uh, I don't know if it's available in India in Amazon. Right. Yeah, they, sometimes those are different, but you can. Uh, I'm sure yeah. you can find a place to watch this. But once again, and hey, you're doing great. 100 cents for review if you haven't watched it. Rick, your initial thoughts, please. Um, I didn't like it. There you go. I don't want to. Um, I think the best way I, I wrote this down for me to. Oh, by the way, if you're keeping score, 275th all time, our um, 68th of the year, our 26th Malayalam all time, okay. and our sixth Malayalam of the year. Um, uh, one of the reasons, and I don't know if any of you would, would do this, but if you love film and you love cinema theory, Um, There's a book written in 1960 by Siegfried Krakauer called uh, Theory of Film, and it's particularly about um, the the, the subtitle connected to it is The Redemption of Physical Reality. And it's about realism in film and the trajectory of realism in film, and there's different schools of thought about it. And it has to do with things pertaining to that the things that wouldn't happen versus things that couldn't happen. There's a big difference between if you're watching a film and you think that wouldn't happen, Mm. there's still a possibility it could. And there's where there's a line. They may have strained credulity and you can think, well, I don't know that that would happen, but I'm not going to say. When there's a lot of... When when I see a film, unless it's hyper-stylized, where I I just shake my head and go, that's just not believable for me, I, I disconnect. And I had a lot of that throughout as well as other issues that i just don't want the totality of the review to be just harping on the things that didn't i didn't like about it Mm. so for those of you who liked it i'm happy you liked it i did not um overall i i i I was engaged a lot of time i had issues with it uh one being the length i do not think it needed to be three hours at all at all uh and that's 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 a that's a big gripe i would have because um I think one of the worst things you can do to a film is like make it too long. Uh, Martin Scorsese. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but see, that's true. But I wonder because when we see Indian films that have length, but they usually have songs and so they have breaks. Uh, true, and, and they of. they also have length built in for a non artistic reason. Scorsese has length for artistic reasons. Yeah, I think it's because he has ego. Let's say it's ego, but his ego was doing it from a standpoint of this is what I want to say artistically. Mm-hmm. Quentin's got an ego. I mean, most filmmakers well, do. But I, here's the thing: I disagree with that, that I, statement I, of this film. Uh, it's hard to tell when a film that's coming from India is three hours long because that was the artistic choice, or that was because that's what the theaters well, expect for their interval. No, I think it was. It was it's Malayalam, so I don't think they they expected that really. Um, I think this is. Uh, I think this one actually had quite a bit to say in it and i think i saw or i read a review on um letterbox 
which is a, a film review app thingy. Uh, and it gave a good, somebody gave a, a good explanation of why they thought it was three hours, uh, because of the, what this film was about and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so we can get into that a little bit later, uh, of, of why they did it. I, I still, I'm always on the side of never making a film too long. Less is more. Always. Um, because I think it, the, the people are going to critique more if they start getting bored. Uh, or, Absolutely. or stuff like that. So um, that's, I think, one of the, I, th I think I've said that many times on yeah. the channel, is that that's one of the, the biggest things, I think, if, if you don't have a film that can um, keep you engaged f for the full three hours, yeah. don't do it. Like, yeah. obviously, RRR, a lot of stuff happening. So many songs, so even, many great uh, action stuff. Even freaking Lagan, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the, Four hours, um, I, I was engaged. But and that's I think where India has an advantage because of all, all the songs and stuff. But obviously this one didn't outside of two musical montages. Sure, didn't have that. Overall though, I still I was actually surprised at how much I was engaged for three hours. Uh, different from you, obviously. Yeah. Um, but let's uh, let's get into it. Um, and I, I, it's hard because the I think the overall theme of this film is something that you kind of have to talk about first. And what do you think the theme of this film was? Or do you think there was a theme? Um, I. It was probably lost on me because I was so distracted by so many other things that I was not enjoying mm -hmm. that my caring or interest were void. Mm -hmm. So when you don't care and yeah. you're not interested, yeah. you're just counting the minutes for it to conclude rather than looking for the things that it could be about. Yeah. And I, I understand and read some snippets of reviews. Mm -hmm. I watched Jimmy Cage's review and just... And you like it? He liked it. Okay. Um, and mention some things about the story and some of the things that are presented and what things represent. N none of that was Resident of any interest. Yeah, gotcha. Um, I didn't. I didn't watch his review, but one of the things, and I, I kind of picked up on this early on, was the the. I think the whole theme of this film is toxic masculinity. That's what I think the entire film is about. Actually, okay, is these two men. <laughs> And their massive egos, mm -hmm. not being able to let anything go, and we can talk about the ending because I have thoughts about the ending uh, <laughs> um, as well. Um, but like the fact that like everybody around them, and they had so many different instances to stop, but their pride and their ego got in the way a thousand percent of the time, and it just kept perpetuating, perpetuating, perpetuating. Even though the point, obviously, towards the end where he was trying to um, talk to his father being into it and then his wife demasculated him in front of mm -hmm. his dad who he was having an argument and he slapped her right because he felt demasculated and so like the entire thing of just needing to be the macho man almost i think pointing a finger at the film industry and these hero tropes mm -hmm. that i think this was playing off of. i think that was the entire theme once again i don't think it needed to and the thing that the review said was the reason it was so long is because they wanted to the audience to feel how exhausting that is mm. um which could be an artistic choice and a lot of people obviously liked it i would i would always steer clear of um once again making a film too long yeah i just i that's one of the gravest like most uh, awful things a film can do yeah. because I, I, people will not forgive being bored in a film i don't think no should, i can't yeah it's uh, but that is the primary a uh, crime committed by most movies I dislike. Yeah, yeah. You I see, get bored. I, you, and if obviously being three hours without really big action scenes out toward, uh, towards the end. We've left films because uh, they were boring. Yeah, so outside of big action films toward the ends and there's no songs. And so there's those things in normal Indian three-hour films keep you engaged. Yes. Like, okay, we got a cool song. Most this of the fun. time. This is a, or this is an emotional song or sure. whatever. Uh, that helps keep you engaged. This one didn't have that. So obviously it was an, it might have been an artistic choice. You guys could tell me if you believe with what that reviewer said of is that the reason why it was three hours? But I would that would be a gripe for me with the film, even though I was surprised at how much I was actually engaged with the film. And my wife as well, uh, she enjoyed it. Um, and I did, um, it, even though I wish I wish it wasn't dubbed. Um, I, I'm not saying it was dubbed in a different language. It was not sync sound. It wasn't sync is, sound. Is what I'm saying when I say dubbed. Yes. Um, Hence can, realism. But they might have been, once again, doing that because it was uh, almost a point of finger at the hero worshipping films. Could be. Right? Could um, be. That we see. It's obviously yeah. all over any of the hero worship films with the big, especially in like the Telugu industry, big, massive. Yeah. I mean, even in Vikram. 
and uh, Kamal Hassan had a big, massive, dubbed, booming voice, right? Mm-hmm. And they do that, so maybe that's why they did that. But I like the the two performances. I think uh, who who's this character? Um, this one, right? Uh, Bijou. I like his. Yeah, I like his presence a lot. I think he has a really intimidating, especially with that mustache mm-hmm. he's got going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that. Wow, he looks incredibly different in. Uh, his in just his standard IMDb headshot. <laughs> I he was like, good. I like, know. That looks like his normal look. No, he looks way, I mean, at least with a full beard, he looks like, I'm guessing he either put on poundage or had a had a fat kind of suit because he was... Yeah, he, no, that was, his, I think that was his physique. Okay, he seemed a little bigger mm-hmm. in, in the film. Um, what'd you think, obviously I know you didn't like the whole, the whole uh, film as a whole and that's fine, but what'd you think about the ending? Because I do want to talk about the ending. And not, not the, after the fight, obviously. Yeah, no, what, the, the very, very, very end. Yeah, like, like what happened after the fight? <laughs> um, I, again, at that point, I was really at a place where I was just counting the minutes to conclude, so I knew we, I could move on with my day, mm-hmm. and I, it, it, like many of the other things that I saw throughout the film, just didn't seem plausible to me. Mm. It, it just, I, and and it was frustrating because I didn't understand what it was I was supposed to be gleaning from that. And I think even if I had had the thought pre-film watching Mm. of it being a representative depiction of toxic masculinity, Mm -hmm. I probably would have the same feeling I do right now. Mm. The thought of, okay, but was it? Because if it was, it wasn't so clear to me that it was very, very Mm. evident. And, And that's part of the reason is that is just the plausibility. Like I said earlier, there's a difference between that couldn't happen versus that wouldn't happen. Yeah, I it, it became pretty clear to me, at least that's the my interpretation of the film very early on, of it being about toxic masculinity. And I talked to my wife about it mid deer and I we watched this admittedly in three settings. Okay. So we watched I, one I hour watched one in, hour I, I watched it in one three hour and, setting. And also that's pretty normal for me. Uh <laughs> it's, I have two six month or almost six month old twins and a toddler so we have to watch at night Mm -hmm. and then we get really sleepy sometimes and so i fall asleep yeah 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 or we watch during their nap time in the middle of the day and they wake up yeah so there's all this different kind of stuff so i watched it in like one hour one hour one hour yeah so maybe that helped uh, a little bit with the uh the, the flow of it not being a strict full three hours but it still felt long don't don't get me wrong but yeah that that came pretty clear to me i did not like that ending though Mm -hmm. Um, because it's just the, the 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 switch that he turned yeah and i the the plausibility well of that. even not that because obviously i'm sure it's this obviously there's a metaphor behind it of obviously he was he was this beast and usually the um, when um there's uh maybe it's like um a metaphor of like usually the police uniform makes people into monsters that was kind of keeping his monster at bay Mm -hmm. almost a little bit i just i was i was anticipating the entire okay who's gonna die one of these two is gonna die somebody has to give something has to give in the end and if it's a legitimate yeah so maybe it's a a double-edged short of uh my initial this is about toxic masculinity and this is all kind of like almost a metaphor and that kind of stuff and then they do this in the end and it might still be the same thing but i didn't like i i I was it was a little too much for me it was like the cut and it's like Uh, yeah and i know there was a little more than that i'm not saying that but it's just that i i wanted the ending to be different i did i did not get the the payoff that i was hoping for for the three hours that i invested right in this film in the ending um and maybe my interpretation is wrong, and you guys can tell me if that is that is incorrect. But that's that that is my second biggest gripe outside of the length of the film. Even though I I, I enjoyed the film, I don't know if I would sit down. I mean, I know you would, you don't have to answer yeah, yeah, that. No, I would not. Um, because three hours is a lot of time to invest. Yes, it in is. In a film that is not just like a happy, like a stupid K three G cringy kind of stuff, right? Where you have fun musical numbers to sit through. Uh, this is more of a task. Of to sit through for three hours. It is. Uh, I know. I know. I'm not asking you to answer that. I know. I know your answer with that one. Yeah. It is. Um, but uh, what some stuff that you liked in the film? Is there anything you didn't like the score? You didn't like? I thought it was cinematography. O- yeah. Sorry. Because I, I actually liked all of the, both those things. I thought it was overscored. Hmm? Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, I thought it was overscored. Um, I 
while I didn't see flaws in cinematography, I didn't see anything in particular that was um, that stood out for me to go, wow, that was meritorious. Interesting. Um, okay. uh, and so, yeah. No, okay. Uh, I did not get the overscored thing at all. Yeah, I did. Um, that's interesting. Uh, there aren't a lot of sequences that do not have music underneath them um, for the three hours. I thought they fit, though, uh, and I enjoyed them. Um, and I enjoyed the musical, like the two the little maybe, montages, bar- barely two montages of of music you kind of get in it. Um, and I was. I was also kind of sometimes hoping for a little, even though I guess this is not really what they were going for. I was like, I kind of wanted him to kill that guy mm-hmm. <laughs> a little bit in the middle of it because um, I, I like that whole sequence of him picking up with the truck. And um, but they probably didn't want to. They, they, I think they wanted to, that would ruin their redemption arc for him of coming out of a cop and coming back if he killed a person because then he would have to go to jail if he killed somebody. Um, so I, um, you know what I'm saying? Because obviously, yeah. if he ended up actually pushing that guy over and he died, he couldn't become a cop because he just killed a guy, right? And so obviously, it had I to guess be- the, the the demolition of the public property was yeah. forgivable. Yeah, taking a life would not be. Um, I guess, and it was just an eye for an eye. But that makes no sense in the fact that he had already killed what sixty three men or whoever. How many he had killed before? Before. He I became a cop? Yeah. So he wasn't disqualified before. Why would one more murder disqualify him? I don't know if that was actually real, though. Like, I think that was like... You don't think he was a killer before? Well, I think that was pretty given in the story. No, I'm saying I didn't know if that was, like, supposed to be, like, like folklore about him kind of thing. Oh, no, I uh, think that's legit. I think that's why, like... And he, I think he killed them all. He may have killed every single one of them with his bear hug. Mm. So I, 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 oh yeah. Okay. So that's for me, it's like, why couldn't he have killed him? I, I, there's just a lot of stuff for me that was, yeah. Yeah. In that, that realm. Um, hey, I, I, I don't think I talked about the Koshi as well. I, I liked him as well. Uh, the, the main two, I actually liked every, uh, almost everybody in the cast in terms of, it was pretty, the, the only non Malayalam thing outside of, from their performances was the fact that they were, especially our main two leads. Um, um, oh, what is his name? Koshi, Raj and- Koshi and um, their dubbing of their voices and making them bigger. Because yeah. that's not typical Malayalam um, from what I've... No. Um, maybe it's typical mainstream because I think it was that way in Trishium too, right? I don't remember. It may have been. So maybe for like the, the more massier Malayalam. Maybe, it's, maybe. Um, which I, even though I don't think this was a massy, I think it was trying to play on those films and, and, and not particularly from Malayalam, but maybe from other industries, just the hero style of films and that kind of stuff. So you may be able to answer questions I have that were things okay. that bothered me. Yeah, yeah. The first one was, did you ever believe he was drunk? And did you ever believe he was an alcoholic? Um, I think they made him look, yeah, intoxicated at uh, at times. Uh, he no, never... That's different than saying they made him look versus I believed he was are two different stories. Yeah, no, I, I think he, I believed it. You did? Yeah, I did. Okay. You did. That surprises me. No. no, no, I did. Not at all. I never believed he was an alcoholic and okay. I never believed he was drunk. Um, gotcha. Do you, the question I have, and it may be because because this will happen to me, admittedly. I'll see something and I won't like it, and I'll say this doesn't make any sense. But then if I ask questions, I'll go, oh, they did reveal that and I just missed it because I was so disconnected and yeah. not caring. Yeah. So something I didn't understand, mm-hmm. why were they so insistent on getting the video footage off the phone because that was so damning for the cop and they didn't want that thing submitted as evidence when it was already broadcast on the news? Yeah, I don't know. That confused me as well. Why didn't he know he was filming him when he was pouring the alcohol in the thing as he says, this is going to end my career? How did he not know that him sitting across the table like this, that he wasn't filming him? Yeah, I think he probably just thought he was checking his phone because obviously they wanted, since he was a, a, I don't know what word they used for him, but like a, what do they they call him in India? Like they're well connected or whatever and right. so obviously they wanted him to be comfortable and so right. i'm assuming he just was like he's just on his phone and i'm going to what i'm going to do what the other guy said um, yeah those those were some of the many that for me were yeah. just i just it, the believability yeah. factor 
went out the window for me. Yeah. When I was watching, I didn't know if you were going to like it or not um, because of some of those things. Yeah. Um, and also, why and so didn't he kill shocking. him when he was on the motorcycle and he had the machete? I think they were just... I think he wanted to... One, he probably would have died if he <laughs> killed them all. <laughs> they were driving, at least. Um... And I think they, they they were wanting to wait for this big, exactly duel or something, right? It, it was a it w it didn't make sense in terms of like legitimate justification of a character. It made sense in terms of we need to continue the story to make this movie. I think it also might have gone into my theory of, um, um, you know, they do all these things that should lighten the tension. Of everything, of like he's doing him a kindness of all this kind of stuff, and mm -hmm. then his ego and toxic masculinity still comes into play, even though he's doing this nice, yeah, th nice thing, even though he's obviously the one that and did, did the, it to him. Obviously, the last one for me was: did yeah. did you believe their fights, and ultimately that the bear hug was as death dealing as it appeared? It depends on the man, I guess, right? Some well, people have a strong bear hug, man. And based like a, on his appearance, did he look like he was... Did they look like that was a match where he was, like, just devastatingly powerful with that bear hug on that frame? I, I didn't think it was that non-believable. Yeah, it was uh, it, it way... It, to me, the mismatch of just the physicality alone and what was evidenced in the fight sequences and what both people were capable of doing... I number one, I didn't believe that was an equal fight. I thought it was completely, it would have been a mismatch. But let's say it wasn't. Um, it would take mythical level of physical power to kill someone with a bear hug from that position. And I consistently, in my mind, was thinking, "You do know you can headbutt people from behind." Like he was sitting there, and there was these yeah. shots constantly. I was like, "All it takes is one of these, man. Just go in his face," and he never did it. So those were the just throughout, like yeah. every fifteen minutes, I'd get something. So that by the time I was at the interval, it was it was it was hard. You knew you yeah. you said you had an idea. Oh, I yeah. probably wasn't I, gonna I, like it. I I, I, <laughs> I had an idea through uh, the film whether you would like it or not. I yeah. I was like maybe, but I I I'm also wouldn't be surprised at all if uh, if Rick didn't like this one. Were you looking to see if there were gonna be texts? <laughs> no. Okay, because that happens sometimes. <laughs> there have been times we watch movies, and I, I, I'll send him a text and say, I'm 45 minutes in. Is this going to get any better? <laughs> <laughs> um, but the... Um, <coughs> yeah, I, I was wondering why he just didn't headbutt him as well. Yeah. That was, uh, that was something I was like... I mean, I'm not even a trained fighter, and right. if you're about to die, you're, you're kind of going to do... Your life's at stake. You're going to do anything. You're going to do anything yeah. to... Uh, to try and to I just, I just it. didn't believe he could physically overpower him or take. It requires. I didn't think. I, I mean, I did some research, and the amount of strength it takes. It's, it's, like if someone squeezes someone to death, it's typically a grown man doing it to a child or a small woman. You, I don't know that you're going to find two men, because the amount of force it takes, and it would take a very long time to accomplish it. It's not so, It's not like doing a rear naked choke on somebody. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very different thing. And it's just the plausibility of it with somebody who's clearly been sitting behind a desk for the past 30 years and hasn't done anything physical is suddenly able to do that was for me. Mm. Again, it's one thing, like, I love using this film as an example because it's so great on so many levels. Everything, everywhere, all at once has so many ridiculous things that transcend reality. Mm but none of them couldn't happen they just wouldn't happen mm -hmm. it, there's so you're like well maybe i mean it's there is hot dog, it's probably hot, unlikely hot dog fingers won't happen probably unlikely but it's in the realm of that right versus when you're trying to present something as real and it's just straight like he was in the tractor mm -hmm. and he had lifted him up well he was he waited for him on the sand when he was bringing, it's like, when he's, no, don't come get me. Well, I, right? I, I'd assume because he was hurt. Cause he was hurt. He couldn't move. Later, he was like on a stretcher. Right. He was very hurt. So. However, when it lifted him up and they the cops stop him, it showed that and it showed him in there moving his arms around, like trying to get out. Not two seconds later in frame as it's lowering, he's in, he's not moving at all. So I guess between that moment on the edit and the next moment he passed out completely 
those kinds of things are really difficult for me to stay in the moment with storytelling. <laughs> I reference what I said at the beginning. If you want to know my mindset about film, and this isn't just an American thing. This began with Italian films, and then the French did it, and I was referencing the, this German author about film theory and realism. Unless it's farcical and nonsensical with intentionality, where it's making fun, I fall into the category of realism. Well, you don't think a film can be an entire metaphor? It and can. And not be in reality, but it, also look like it's reality? Absolutely it can. Well, that's where I think this film lied. Yeah, I, I don't think that this whole thing was farce. Well, it's not farcical, but I, I want to say it's more of a, a metaphor. Well, if it is, then even more, since it's it's a metaphor. Example, all of the parables that Jesus told were metaphorical, but they were all rooted in reality, and he didn't use anything in his stories that violated natural law. Well, that that's, and that's that Jesus, made not the, a movie. <laughs> that's what, but that's what makes the storytelling... That's a dumb comparison. No, it's not, because that's what makes the storytelling have an impact, because the actual moral is dependent upon the truth of the story. And if there's not truth in the story, why should I believe your metaphor? If Jesus directed this, it would have been better. Am I right, Rick? <sighs> <laughs> Talking about... <laughs> The power of storytelling. And the power of Jesus! And the power of story the as metaphor. The power of Christ compels you, just not this film, because Rick thinks those it's with shit. You, those of you with an IQ above 100 understand what I'm talking about. What if it's 99? You won't get it. Ah, oh, damn. Anyways. Now, those of with an IQ of 69, you're fine. Nice. Anyways, let us know what you thought about this film. Uh, what you, uh, who you think is right, who you think is wrong. Are we both idiots? Well, that's always a foregone conclusion. Well, duh. Uh, yeah. And what should be our next Malayalam film that we should watch? Please let us know down below.